Welcome to the I Love Recruiting Podcast with your host, Adam Roach. Hey everybody, welcome back to the I Love Recruiting Podcast. I am your host, Adam Roach. In today's episode, we have Mr. John Roosh coming to you from Michigan. John is a former team leader inside of the Keller Williams organization, which means he is a great recruiter. He is now an operating principal, a MAPS leadership coach, and he's also the host of a podcast called Get Forward Focused. So what you're going to hear today is John was a panelist on a virtual event that the I Love Recruiting Company hosted, and it was called Leading and Recruiting During a Crisis. So check out what John has to say, and uh, welcome to the I Love Recruiting Podcast. John Roosh, all the way from Michigan. John, tell us about yourself and who you are, and what's your superpower, man? Hey, thanks so much, uh, everybody. And Adam, a big special shout out to you and your team for uh, pivoting really quickly and putting something together of so much value like this. It's an honor to, to know you and to follow you and be in business with you. So um, everybody, my name is John Reich. I'm the operating principal at Keller Williams Lakeside. Um, in addition to that, I'm a leadership MAPS coach. I love my, my MAPS family, love coaching. And um, in addition to that, I work in uh, uh, speaking and training Uh, doing different leadership development workshops and and best practices in business. Uh, Launched a podcast last year called Forward Focus. So got my hands in a lot of different things. Uh, I think my superpower, (laughs) I love that question. (laughs) It's taking in um, a lot of information really quickly and chunking it down simply and then teaching people it. And so it comes from me just wanting the best uh, out of others and helping them reach their peak in professional selves. Excellent, man. Very cool. Hey, tell us real quick about the uh, Get Forward Focus podcast. Tell us more about that. What is that? Yeah, I'm really, really excited. So I have this vision of having a one-stop shop for anything and everything leadership and business focused. Um, I think there's a lot of great leadership podcasts out there right now. What I haven't found is a podcast that in real time, if you and I were interviewing or talking about a specific topic, you could literally, it flashes up, download the resource right now. Nice. Um, and so I've been working on this since October. It's launching. It was supposed to launch this week with mm. COVID though. We uh, delayed uh, probably till June. So there's some, some stuff that we're going to start pushing out, but it's just a one-stop shop. I push people to either training, workshops, maps, coaching, wh- whatever resource they need um, after we do a consultation and a conversation. Love that. Excellent. Love that. And, and for all of our listeners right now, so after the show, or actually right now, if you want to, you can go to iloverecruiting.com and you can fill out your name and we're going to send you all the valuable information that John and all the panelists will be giving me to give all of to, to all of you. So go check that out. iloverecruiting.com. John, you ready to dive into some nuts and bolts, man? We got 20 minutes here. Absolutely. I'm ready to okay. roll. So here's some questions I have prepared. So as this market in the world is shifting, right? It's, it's, it, we're going into a, we are in a very unique time. How do you stay a strong and authentic leader, not only for yourself, but also for your people? What are you doing? I think that's a great question. And if, if anyone was on the growth initiative call um, with Keller Williams International, you heard Gary nail it. And it's what I've been doing for the last three weeks. It's starting every day in a place of gratitude, mm. every single day. And it's three things that I'm grateful for. And if it's a person, I'm contacting them before lunch just to have them hear my voice and give thanks. Um, No one knows how long this is going to last, right? And so I think remaining calm and remaining authentic in just who we are as as beings, as our soul, Mm -hmm. and also acknowledging that, yeah, it's scary. There's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. At the same time, we know that we're going to persevere through this. So The other thing I'm asking myself every day is how do I want to be remembered in the way I showed up? Um, And so I don't think there's an ability right now to over communicate. I think you as a leader need to be communicating with every single person in your world and having a consistent message and tone around here's the mindset we need to get into Mm -hmm. and then the actions we need to take. And so the last thing I'd say on that is every day I make a hit list of how, what are the top three things I'm going to do to manage through this crisis? It could be a video, it could be cutting expenses, it could be contact my CPA, whatever. And then how many contacts with internal and external people do I want to make? So my own agents, my own clients, and then I'm still trying to grow my businesses, right? So reaching out and building relationships with those not in my world yet. Yeah, for sure. 
So curious, and let's just be totally, guys, everyone that's listening, we're just going to be totally real and totally transparent. Um, have you had any down days? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what'd you do? What were those down days like, and, and how did you get yourself through it? Because I know we've got, now we've got over 200 people that are on here right now, um, and I'm sure they've had some down days, so how can we help lead them through some of their down days? Yeah, so I think the first thing is understanding, like, we're human beings with emotion, Mm -hmm. So feeling down is normal. Every human being feels down at some point. The key is, and great leaders understand this, it's how quickly we bounce back. There's a great book called Grit uh, that talks about this and, and talks about perseverance. Um, my cousin's a Detroit police uh, officer. And when you look at, uh oh, did I lose you? Nope, I got you. When, I, when you look at what Detroit's going through right now, I mean, there's been a captain who passed away. Uh, there's been, you know, 30, 40 plus police officers who have tested positive. So uh, he's got three little children. He called me in tears. Hmm. And so, yeah, that got me down. Um, that got me really down. What I did to bounce back was come back to a place of gratitude. I acknowledged the feelings that I'm going through. And I just talked it out with my spouse. My, Haley has been my rock through this too. She's had down days. I've had down days. So I think right now is not hopping on the news every two minutes, not looking right. on Twitter and what's going on in the world, but acknowledging the facts, right? Yep. But realizing that just like, the, just like anything else we've been through, this too shall pass. So it's, it's that balance of just reality and realizing that I'm not going to get caught up in the emotions of it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Put attaching or not attaching certain emotions to certain actions, man. That's really, really strong. Yeah. So speaking of actions, walk us through your daily routine now, right? So it's a little bit different than what it used to be. The thing of self-care with my fitness. So uh, focusing on uh, running, lifting, push-ups, sit-ups, things of that nature is, is really important to me to maintain my fitness and to get a sweat going before my day goes. Um, right after that, I'm hopping into five pages of a book right now the three that i'm shifting through are shift who moved my cheese and the art of war and after that i look at the key headlines from the associated press and the morning brew just because again that idea of balancing reality and facts and not mm -hmm. just shifting into the emotions of it um so those are the big things that i've been doing every single morning and then I just hop into my day. Yes, I still shower. Yes, I still get dressed. Uh, you know, um, sometimes it may just be waist up. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, but, but yeah, you still get dressed, still get in that mindset, still shaving, all those different things, because I think that brings a sense of normalcy to what we're doing. Uh, I do shut down for 30 minutes a day. I have lunch with my wife. That's a new normal. I'd like nice. to probably continue over Zoom uh, when we get back to this. And she's in her workplace and I'm in mine. Uh, right now, we're both uh, cohabitating, obviously, in our house at work. Right. And um, by the end of the day, I take my dog for a walk and we go on a two to three mile walk. I give gratitude again on the day. I reflect on what I want to do differently the next day. And I judge myself on if it was a win or not. That's awesome, man. Hey, have you seen that meme? Uh, there was, there was a, a, a picture of a dog on top of the cabinets in the kitchen. It says, I'm not going to go on any more walks today. Have you seen that one? I have seen that one. That one was pretty <laughs> good. It made me laugh. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. My border oh. collie uh, definitely has not uh, had that energy yet. She absolutely loves walks and runs. So that's, that's awesome. Okay. So gang, that was leadership, right? We just spent about 10 minutes on leadership. Now we're going to shift into recruiting. And, yeah. and just as an FYI for all of our listeners, the format of today is every 20 minutes or so, we're going to have a panelist and we have a 10 minute break and then go into another panelist. So we've got about eight minutes or so here, John. Let's go into recruiting. So here's the question I had. What is it about recruiting that you truly enjoy and what about it brings you energy? All right. This is really simple for me because recruiting to me is, a, is talent attraction, opportunity created or presented, and then people development. I've always believed in those three levels. And, yeah. and when I go into that mindset, knowing I have the tools and resources as I get to know someone's business mm -hmm. or what their needs are, when I go into the mindset that it's those three things and I have the gift to give to them or I can be that channel for them, it, it pumps me up because I love the energy part of it comes from when they have that breakthrough, when they right. grasp the model, when they, 
when they save 20 grand a quarter in their business, when their revenue grows by 40%, it, it just is amazing to me to take a help take an agent or somebody wants to grow their business from two or 3 million a year to 10 million in 24 months. And it's the proven models and systems. It's, it's the MREA. It's the one thing it's shift. So that's, I see that as such an honor and a privilege, not even really a, a task or responsibility. Um, and I've always kind of looked at recruiting in that way. Yeah, that's awesome. And Hey, guess what? Our, we're blowing up right now with questions. Can you repeat those three things, please? Uh, absolutely. So I've always seen recruiting as three things, talent, attraction, identifying it and attracting it, the opportunity presented or created, and then developing your people, people development, actually following through with what you said you'll do. Yeah. Now you are an incredible recruiter. Uh, you were a team leader, a very, very high level, successful team leader, high level recruiter. Um, as you sat down with these people and you started to really understand and learn their gaps and be able to fulfill that gap there. Uh, and then they came in and you saw them grow into either their potential or reach what they had spoken of. What, what, that make you feel, man? It, you know, it's a twofold one that there was more work to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause we only know what we know and we don't know what we don't know. Right. And so it was consistently creating vision or opportunity to outpace because the moment they feel that they have no more to learn from you, they're going to mm -hmm. probably go find a different room. So there was this, this always of like, what's, what's that next thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But the other side, it was just a, a, a moment of gratitude and fulfillment that I work for a company that is so collaborative and culturally sound that shares, gives and, and pours into each other that I have that gift to be able to do that with somebody and, and do it well. And with maps coaching and, and being a maps coach, being reinforced with that community as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a sense of gratitude and fulfillment and a thirst for more. Does that, that make yeah. sense? Yeah, for sure. You know, I did a podcast not too long ago where someone said, and, and maybe you can add to this as a coach that the individual I was interviewing, his name was John White. He was with Northwestern mutual is with Northwestern mutual. And uh, he went on to say that he had, a cat, he had to have a coach tell him what his true potential really was because he didn't know it and he didn't believe it. And then the coach had to actually give him the vision and then he grew into that vision. As recruiters, man, would you agree that that's kind of what we have to do too? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it starts with asking great questions. Um, get away from asking why questions and get away from trying to tell the story too quickly. That's the number one thing that recruiters get into issues with, not just at Keller Williams, anywhere is they get into the sales side of it too quickly. A great recruiter says, how can I add value to you in 20 minutes? What would it take for me to earn the right to sit with you and dive into your expenses and cut them by 20%? Who's yeah. showing you the models and systems and tools to do that? Mm -hmm. If I get to know your business at a deeper level and I provide value in that 20 minute Zoom call, would you be open to a follow-up Zoom call where we could explore what a transition to KW could look like? Nice. And that is the key. And I'm going to add one more piece to that. Every great recruiting session starts with something similar to this. Adam, thank you for taking time out of your hectic schedule to sit with me. It's an honor to be here. Today is one of the most important conversations I'll be having. Would it be okay with you if I take notes? Mm. When you start like that, they, they're like, well, heck yeah, take notes, right? And then you say, Adam, you told me that the number one thing we wanted to get out of today's conversation is insert blank. Tell me more about why that's important to you. Yep. That's awesome. Taking notes is so valuable. So for all of our either recruiters or potential recruiters on this phone, on this, on this zoom, write down what they say. Would you agree? 100%. And yeah. it's, it's kind of crazy because my screen's still frozen. So I'm just yep. kind of going with this. So, <laughs> um, but yes, I agree with you. Taking notes is very powerful because we learn in three types of ways. We're auditorial, right? We're, we're kinesthetic with movement and we're visual. And so if I can hear it, see it and move it, it's going to be a lot more uh, impressionable and probably stick in my brain longer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so this is, I'm in, I'm in my office in my house and this is my whiteboard. Uh, when I was recruiting, I had the exact same thing in my office and I would have people get up and write their numbers or get up and write something. And it was, it was really, really good. So I love that, that you said all those three things. Hey, we had someone say, question-wise, real quick, that's awesome. I'm, hopefully you can email or forward those scripts. I do think that's one of the things that you can provide, and we'll give it to our people as they go to iloverecruiting.com and fill out their name, and we'll shoot it to them. Yep. I'm, I have different scripts that I can share. No problem. 
Okay, gotcha. And someone just said they're only able to see me. Uh, that's because John's frozen. So hopefully you can still hear John uh, because he's given some powerful value. Okay, real quick, John, we've got a couple minutes here before we finish. Let's talk about those maybe those those recruiters right now that are a little reluctant to to go recruit. What what would you say to those people right now? Okay, so this is a big thing that I've been working on with um, all of my team leaders I've been coaching. Um, so first and foremost, and this rings true no matter what, perfection is the enemy of profit. Mm. So what I want people to understand is that those thoughts are natural. Those thoughts are real. And again, you as a recruiter, it's same as leadership, how quickly you can overcome that, um, I believe will speak you know, highly to your success through this. So here's the key. If you really can add value, if you really come from care and support and you know you can help somebody, it's your responsibility to do that. So here's the question I would ask people to ask. If you knew that this would last another six months, how would you be showing up differently in your recruiting activities? Hmm. Mm. I believe that this be limiting belief of I'm struggling with recruiting right now, I think it's actually a deeper inset security that maybe most of the time you're not really sure exactly how you're going to add value to this person's business. And I'm going out on a limb there and people may not agree with that, but I just think that this crisis is, is highlighting that insecurity that might be there. And I would say embrace that as a recruiter right now. Look at Jason Abrams' audits. Master those audits. Write 15 questions under each of those audits that could be helpful for you to navigate those conversations. So understand, it's natural to have those feelings, but at some point we can either stay stuck or be stuck. Right. So if we're stuck right now in that feeling, how long are you going to choose to stay stuck in that feeling? Mm, that's really, really good. So stay stuck or be stuck. Hold on. Someone just said something else. Um, real quick. You know what? They asked, what are you doing to start a conversation over the phone via text or via email? Real quick. Can you answer that one? Absolutely. It's, it's this simple. Hey, Adam, it's John Rash with Cover Williams Lakeside. And the reason I'm reaching out today is because I've been talking to top agents all across the country. And this is what they're saying. They either want help with cutting their expenses to put more cash in their pocket they would like more insight into market shifts that we've seen previously and what might happen in this cycle, or they'd like to bulletproof and protect their hard earned transactions. Mm -hmm. Now I have all the resources and models in the book shift that Gary Keller wrote in 2008, nine, if we could hop on a 20 minute zoom, which would be the best use of your time for your business? Mm -hmm. Good. And then how do they work? What's what's a typical reply? Uh, well, wow. I, I actually would like to cut some expenses. Um, you know, I, I, I don't really necessarily have a model to do that. And then I come back with, okay, great. Have you heard of the book shift? And if they have or have not, I say, please read pages 29 to 34 specifically to get in the financial conversation mindset and then bring 90 days of credit card and bank statements to our Zoom call. We're going to do a role play activity. I'm going to share my iPad screen with you and show you how to cut expenses. And then we'll talk about what our Zoom number two meeting will look like. So you're just hitting them with value. Just chuck it, chunk it down. Who's helping them cut expenses by 20%? Ask them that question. Yeah. That is really good. You know, the, the chat is blowing up right now. Can you say it again? Slower, slower. All right. So we don't have time to go back and say it again, but I'm sure John will provide that script uh, and we'll be able to give that to you uh, when you, when you go to iloverecruiting.com and put in your name and email address. All right. So John, last thing, what yep. are the top three actions that as our listeners are listening right now and viewing uh, that you would highly recommend either from a coaching standpoint, from a leadership standpoint or recruiting standpoint, top three actions that they can take from, from this moment going forward that they, they should implement into either their day, uh, their exercises in leading recruiting or, or something along those lines. What are they? What do you think? Yep. Real simple for me. Uh, number one, utilize the pivot shift uh, page on the KW connect. This page is live trainings in real time on demand trainings that were recorded uh, benefits to save sellers and buyers money through Keller mortgage and Keller insurance resources and presentations and scripts that um, are literally set up from KWRI. So that's the first thing, the shift pivot page on KW Connect. Number two, um, lean into coaching and training right now. If you don't have a coach, I'd be happy to take a request or a conversation with you about what coaching through MAPS coaching can look like. Uh, coaching is about accountability. Coaching is about seeing things that you don't see, 
coaching is about pulling out the resources that are already in you because you're as a client, creative, resourceful, and whole. And so if you have questions about how coaching can elevate your game or elevate your business, that's the second thing is learn about coaching and learn what that could look like. And then the last thing is, I just want you to think about embracing this as an opportunity to improve your business approaches forever. What I mean by that is this. If you think about somebody that you love right now, Adam, when is the next time that you feel you'd be able to go out in public with them and stand one foot away from a stranger and not think twice about it? Mm, it's going to be a while. Exactly. So don't we think that we should think about our businesses and how those practices should shift as well? Mm -hmm. Business as we know it and the economies have changed and they will fundamentally shift for a long time. Some things will come back to normal. Other things will shift and be the new normal. So think about the different divisions and departments that you're leading every single day in your organization. What can be done remotely? What can be done more efficiently? What checklists or administrative projects can your team work on right now so you come out of this ready and better prepared? Because when that garden hose, right now it's bent and there's a lot of pent up water in there, which is future business. We know that garden hoses is eventually unbent. And when that happens, those that are prepared and positioned with their pipelines, with their systems, with their checklist, will come out of this rocking and rolling, ready to thrive. So those are the three things that I'd be focusing on. That was awesome, man. You crushed that. Well, John, my friend, my brother, this has been really, really real. Uh, I know that all the individuals who have been listening here have taken a lot out of this. Hold on, someone just said something. Can you put the email on your whiteboard, thank you. Uh, the, the email, actually the website is iloverecruiting.com and then you'll go throw your name and email address in there and we'll forward you all this information that John is gonna give us. Uh, John, is there anything I can do for you today, my friend? Uh, get me better Wi-Fi, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no man, I, I just wanna say, uh, you're one of my three gratitudes today, so mm -hmm. I wanna tell you in front of everybody and I had it written down this morning, I appreciate you and appreciate what your team's doing over I, I Heart Recruiting and um, continue to do what you're doing because it's impacting uh, hundreds and hundreds of people. Thanks, man, really appreciate that. Thank you for your time. And everybody, yeah, go, go uh, I love recruiting.com. go put in your name and John's gonna give us all his scripts and the information that he can. Uh, and go check out his podcast. Lastly, Get Forward Focus Podcast. Is that on Apple Apple iTunes, John? It, it, it is. We, we, we delayed a launch. Um, when right. I sent the template, uh, I'll send a template to you later today with the scripts as well, Adam. And on there, we'll tell everybody exactly where they can go to check out some, some pre-launch stuff that I've put together um, and a little bit of like leading through times of uh, crisis like this. And the full launch will happen in sometime May, maybe first week of June. Perfect. All right, my friend. Well, hey, we love you. We appreciate you being on here. Stay safe out there. Stay healthy and keep leading and keep recruiting. 